Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Wonderful. All right. So I'm going to try using this here. Hope you guys are having a great time today. Thank you so much for coming on out, and thank you to uh, the LATHAM, uh, you know, conference here. Uh, clicker is working. There we go. Let's go back. <laughs> I kept on pressing it there. Um, my name is Nav, a.k.a. Mr. Metaverse, and I'm wearing a fan here. It looks really unique, though, right? I know. It's old technology, but made in a new way. And that's what the metaverse is. It's the future 3D internet. But to get an idea of this new internet, we need to start somewhere. And that is the old internet, OK? And let's investigate kind of what's already happened. If you look at what's happened you know, with the internet so far, it's touched billions of lives, all right? We use it to talk to each other, to communicate, you know, to have fun. It's how we connect. How new communities have come together all across the world. I mean, we're doing incredible things that we thought were impossible. And, you know, when you look at the history of the internet, though, back in those days, you looked at the countries which started pushing forward with computers and the internet. North America was at the top. It was at the lead. And you had places like, you know, Asia and Middle East and stuff. They were, at, you know, at the end starting then. But things have turned now. In fact, a lot of innovation is happening out in the east. And we're seeing that taking place in places like, you know, Saudi Arabia did, uh, I think it's $3.2 trillion is what they're planning to put into their, uh, you know, play with these new technologies. Dubai, China, right? All these countries are really pushing hard because history repeats itself. There was an important point also in 2000, Y2K. Who here remembers Y2K? Yeah? <laughs> there we go. All right. An interesting thing started happening, and um, there was certain companies that were excited. They got into the internet early, and they're like, I'm going to do this stuff. And some of those names that we know today, like Amazon, you know, Google, they started back in those days. But it wasn't easy. Back in those days, there was a lot of confusion about how do we, you know, get onto this computer stuff, right? Who here can type on a QWERTY keyboard? Wow, yeah, like everybody, right? It is a necessity. But if I asked that same question back in the 90s, you'd be like, only like two or three people. I was that guy. I was in the back. Yes, I type on a QWERTY keyboard. I'm so cool, right? But back in those days, we had battles with different types of input, such as Dvorak. It was a different type of input on the keyboard. We had different type of mice. One click, two click, three clicks. I had a four click mouse, all right? In those early days of the internet and computers, it was very confusing. And we're seeing that again repeated today with, you know, the different types of glasses and 3D, VR, AR. What type of inputs are we going to have in this new 3D internet, right? It's really exciting, really confusing times ahead. And getting on the line was always the confusing thing. You know, I'm going on the line, right? I'm going into AR, VR. Wow, I just tried this metaverse stuff, right? It's, it's exciting times ahead. So... Getting on the internet was not easy. Who here remembers programming? Yeah, back in those days. HTML was a big thing. And back in those days, there was something called Flash. If you were a Flash developer, and that was how things actually moved, it was huge. Yeah, you, I, I heard that. Yeah, you know, you know Flash, right? Flash was the thing. And back in those days, websites cost uh, over a million dollars. It was insane. But then when people started coming in with a little mom and pop shop trying to compete, it was very hard. In 2003, though, along came this piece of software called WordPress. Revolutionized the industry. Over 80, or 800 million websites today are powered by WordPress. Okay? It changed and revolutionized everything. And that's the key here is that you can now have a mom and pop shop or someplace that's small rival against some of the biggest enterprises in the world as long as their website was really good. And today you see things like, you know, somebody working out of their garage making tens of millions of dollars on like something like a Shopify store or something, right? So it's really, really exciting what has been done. Which brings me over to the next point is this 3D internet, okay? I believe it's going to be built by communities, people coming together and how we form those communities. But what is this metaverse stuff, right? How did it all come to be? So I'll start off with who kind of coined this term, and his name is Steel, uh, Neil Stevenson. He's the writer of a book called Snow Crash. And, you know, he coined that term, the metaverse, as this futuristic world we're all going to live in, and we're all going to be coming inside of there and kind of saying hello and, and doing all that stuff. 
But to get an idea of what the metaverse is, and I'm, I'm going to define it myself, this is my definition from Mr. Metaverse, okay, to you guys, from what I have, you know, I'd say come up with. The metaverse goes beyond the 2D internet, okay? It's what we're used to right now. It's the next iteration, in my opinion. Uh, it is going to be an AR, VR, virtual reality. You're going to have IoT. You're going to have 3D like you've gotten, you know, the video games that you see today. But a very key component is also there, and that is digital ownership and economy, all right? Having that virtual economy is what makes a metaverse a metaverse, in my opinion. Without an economy, you have a virtual world and probably a video game, all right? But the people who will define this are the users. It's all of us. We get to define what the metaverse is. Just like the internet today, so many people have a different definition of the internet. And all of us are right. You've got a young child who says, it's what connects me to YouTube. A teenager who says, it's TikTok. And they do their little, I don't know, the dance. I, I can't do it. I can't. I'm not even going to try. <laughs> but the point is, you know, everyone has a different definition. You ask a, a senior and they'll say, hey, it's the thing that's a big box connected to the TV, connects me to my grandkids. And then you ask, you know, a, a technical person like myself and, you know, we'll say something like, hey, it's a whole bunch of code on a whole bunch of computers connected all around the world. And we're all right. And that's the thing, is back in those days in the 90s, people said that the internet, you're crazy, it's never going to happen. Then all of a sudden, we just woke up, and the internet was in the very fabric of all of our lives. There's no one here who could say that the internet has not touched them or affected them in some way or the other. And that's the key here, is the metaverse is that next iteration. It all started with a game called World of Warcraft. Leroy Jenkins, anyone? Leroy Jenkins, all right. <laughs> Only those who are inside of that community know this, right? It is something that connects us all together. And that's the key. There is the community. But here's the revenue side. Over $9 billion has been made. And that's just in 2017. So much money's coming in because communities came together. They started trading their different weapons and so on, going and fighting dragons and all that. But then they started meeting in real life. And people started getting married, having kids, and having, you know, friendships and parties and communities together. It was a huge thing. After that, another, you know, uh, game called Second Life came about. And till today, Second Life does over $600 million U.S. a year in revenues, all right? That's huge. Can you imagine that? It's all about this virtual economy. And the games of today now, Minecraft, Fortnite, going back to my dance, can't do the dance, all right? <laughs> and Roblox, all right? Who here has a friend or a kid or a nephew or someone who plays Roblox? Oh my goodness, everybody, right? <laughs> I've got three boys and yes, they play Roblox as well. Um, and as they're getting older, you know, they're changing to different types of tastes on going into Fortnite. But the point is, when you look at Roblox, over 43 million daily active users, over 200 million a month, all right? And the majority of them, they're under 16 years old, okay? That means within the next 5 to 15 years, they're going to be the next adults of the future. That's huge. Think about it. They're already people living in the metaverse. They already know this technology. And so for the next generations and all of us, we better start learning this stuff. And I know back in those days, they had the computer training, teaching you how to use a mouse and keyboard. I remember people who said, I will never do that stuff. But today, if you came into this world now and you didn't know how to use a mouse or keyboard, you'd be pretty lost. And that's what's going on. If you see these new business owners, if, who here thinks about starting a business without a website, without social media, right? You're going to say, uh, you need that, right? At least Facebook, something, get some Instagram, right? The same thing is now going to come with the metaverse, in my opinion. If you look at Oculus Quest, Meta, all right, the Facebook company, all right, they bought out a company called Oculus. And till today, they have the most popular device called the MetaQuest. Who here has tried a VR device like the MetaQuest? Have you tried the MetaQuest? Yeah, it is wild. All right, it's incredible. If you've never tried it, it's, it's not the same thing as you taking the phone and you see those glasses, you throw your phone in. No, 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 no. This is a very different experience. If you haven't tried it, go out today, go to a Best Buy or something, give yourself a, an experience like you've never had, and you'll start seeing why we're getting excited. Now, the glasses are pretty heavy right now, 
And other companies are trying to come along to maybe reduce the size of those like Apple Vision Pro. And yes, they are pricey, but the technology there is incredible. Even with the v uh, Vision Pro, you can actually just, from what we were seeing, turn your head to your Mac and the screen will pop out, right? Neat things like that are happening. So when we're thinking about now this economy, what happened was the blockchain community came and they said, okay, let's focus on the economy now. And you have things like Decentraland, Sandbox, and Voxels, where they focus completely on economy, but then, in my opinion, they forgot a key component, which was community, going back to people in community. And that's why, when you hear about Decentraland, and this is always the question I get, they only have like 5,000 people in a day. How are they worth billions of dollars, right? That's exactly it. We do know that once they start bringing in community and getting people in there, you're going to start seeing that economy start building, and that is a key item there. All right, so what can you do in the metaverse? Well, there's education, right? Learning things. We're actually working with a company called Toronto Chinese Academy. All right, well, the Peng Yo, Kamen, Tsai Na, right? Basically, I can actually speak Mandarin, yes. That's because I went to an incredible school. Toronto Chinese Academy is incredible. However, there are many other Mandarin schools, many, many companies that can teach Mandarin, but they're thinking about the future. And that's the key there, is this is how they differentiate. If you want to differentiate in a saturated market, saying that you're going to be entering the metaverse or bringing out these experiences is going to be huge, all right? Events in the metaverse. Has anyone tried to go to an event in the metaverse thus far? Some of you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to see more of those, okay? Events in the metaverse happen all around us, and they're going to keep on happening. Now, of course, the number one metaverse experience is this. I love this. Th nothing is going to replace this, all right? So don't be afraid that, oh, my goodness, this is going to replace it. No, no, no. First and foremost, this is the number one metaverse experience is seeing each other. I'm so glad to see every one of you here, all right? It's so important. But when you don't have the opportunity to come here to see each other, you can come into these virtual spaces, say hello, and experience a 3D environment with spatial awareness. Really important. Uh, we've got here, and you guys can actually uh, play that uh, if you click on that video there quickly. I don't know if it's going to play. <laughs> but that shows you kind of like how meetings would go. Is it even playing? All right. Never mind. Skip to the next slide. <laughs> All right. Is the slides up? Not my fault. I'm telling you, it's not my fault. Yeah. But I love these guys. These guys are doing a great job. Can you hear a round of applause for these guys? Thank you. Thank you for doing this great stuff. Thank you. <laughs> so back to the slides. We'll go back to the slides there. Um, some of the other things that you can do once we put the slides up is we've got um, trainings in the metaverse. Uh, slides, please, if there's coming up. I'll tell you about the trainings in the metaverse. <laughs> Having a bit of tough technical difficulties here, my apologies. Uh, so trainings, we're actually working with a company called Locomobi. And what they're doing is they're a parking machine company. Uh, there we go. And next door. Um, they're a parking machine company, and their machines are quite heavy, all right? So they have to either fly out the customer to their showroom, or they have to go to, like, you know, a, an event or something, right? However, with the Metaverse now, they can call their customers in, and they can actually show them around these incredible things. And they're a forward-thinking company. They've got, like, these AI robots, all kinds of interesting things. So this is the key here, is if you're trying to innovate and push forward, you could do it with the Metaverse. NFT POAPs is another one. Who here has heard of the term POAP? Okay, I'll explain what it is. A few of you. Proof of attendance protocol. What it is, it's like a baseball card or something like that. It's just something that shows that you were there, all right? Now, you may say, well, why do I even need this thing? What, what's the point, right? Well, the key here is imagine now if you went to your exam in high school or you went to your first, uh, you know, sales meeting and they were actually teaching you some sales skills, but tomorrow you become that CEO or you become the next Justin Bieber or Michael Jackson or Elvis, who knows, whatever that is. Now, that POAP, that NFT that you're holding is very valuable. And you could pass that on to your kids and your great grandkids and so on. Can you imagine if you had Elvis's exams? And not just that, this is proof that he attended this and it is trackable on the blockchain. That is a very key thing, is authenticity of being at these places, okay? So it is a very powerful area, and you can have these in these virtual worlds. Virtual interviewing is another one, right? You go into this virtual interview, it reduces down a lot of the stress too. 
I've been in those interviews before, and, you know, you're never good enough. There's, like, 50 other people sitting in line outside, and they're always, oh, man, they're so good. They've got, like, masters, and they've got PhDs, and I'm just, like, I'm coming out of high school, and I'm, like, I don't know what I'm going to even do. I'm not going to get the job, right? <laughs> that, you know, when you're just getting in there, you feel scared. But with these experiences, you can go into a virtual interview. And with ChatGPT, you can even do some really neat things, such as ask ChatGPT to take the job description and interview you. So interesting things can be done, all right? Virtual AR shopping. Who here has tried some of the augmented reality shopping so far? Some of you? Yeah, it's pretty neat. You can actually go and buy a shoe and then put your like, camera on your shoe, and all of a sudden the shoe is there, right? In the future, you're going to be able to actually take a, a virtual mannequin that looks like you, or even have the clothes come right to your body and just, boom, it's on, right? Really neat stuff. And of course, healthcare. We're working right now with a medical professional to bring out healthcare to reduce doctor wait times. That's huge. Come out to the metaverse, and you don't have to wait 16 hours or 14 hours for a doctor. All right, you can actually talk to someone. So it's really, really neat. And of course, IoT. Who here has some Apple Watch or something, right? You're wearing something, right? I see some of you. Yeah, yeah. Imagine now you're walking down in a digital twin of your, you know, wherever you are, and it's following you around your avatar. So really neat stuff. Now, what we do at Charmy. Then that's C H A A R M I, Charmy Worlds. We built a WordPress type of solution. Using our technology, you throw it on any server, and a full metaverse galaxy appears with no programming. It's really neat. We're here to revolutionize the entire world. You can get up and running very easily. And can you guys play the video here, please? Hopefully, this one will work, right? It'll give you guys an idea of the kind of technologies that the metaverse is. Uh, you could click the link. There we go. Hopefully it's showing up. Is it playing? Ta-da, that's our technology. Nothing. All right, there we go. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. No, no. Um, but basically, when it does play, we have full avatars. It's really neat. It's really easy to get up and running into these technologies without having to take years of programming. <laughs> Who here wants to get started in the metaverse, though? Right? I see that. Yeah, a lot of hands. It's exciting times ahead. So I'm going to tell you some of the programming languages and some of the things that you want to start researching today, all right? Java, okay, React, C Sharp, C++, especially in Unity and Unreal. Before I started Charmy, I used to be a part of the Unity Live Help team at Unity, doing this stuff day in, day out. You want to learn about virtual reality technologies, such as, you know, um, getting into the Oculus Quest or what's coming up with Apple Vision Pro. You also want to learn about the blockchain. All right, DeFi, DeFi, you know, crypto, what is all this stuff? What are wallets, right? So start learning that stuff. Now, before I end today, I want to leave you guys with, you know, a quote that I had back in 2008 when the whole world around me was changing and I was like, you know, really lost. I was afraid of what was going to happen and I needed to have a little bit of motivation. So I made this quote in 2008 and I hope it also serves you as well. And that is, many dream a dream and wake up to reality. Some dream a dream and make it reality. I hope you go out there and check out the metaverse today. My name is Nav Gupta, AKA Mr. Metaverse, and I look forward to seeing every one of you in the metaverse. Thank you.